Now what we got to do is start talking about polygons. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this floor. The polygon medium. All right, so I'm going to just set this up a little bit. So we're talking about polygons as a medium and the new medium for you. They are the medium for me. I, I want to just say one kind of out there um, uh, fine art thing. We are in an age, in my opinion, where we are post mediums. We're post material. If there were post modernists, we're post material. We can sculpt something inside of ZBrush, output it to bronze, output it to marble, output it to aluminum, output it to 3D printing resin, output it to foam. We could do that all in the same day. So polygons are really a medium, but it's like the medium of all mediums. You can go anywhere with this. And for uh, those people who aren't familiar with, uh, let's say, how large sculpture gets produced, stuff like Richard McDonald, uh, you can Google enlargements, foam enlargements, and you can see how much of a production it is to take a clay sculpture and turn it into, you know, a large bronze. And it's not all, you know, hands-on fine artistry. It's, it's work. So anyways... Polygons, the new medium of the millennium. And the first thing that we're going to look at is kit bashing. I had that big fancy idea about the new theory of art, and then I throw in this word kit bashing. And kit bashing is how we're going to work today, and it's how I work. What this means is that We'll have this head, we're going to go in, we're going to throw a piece of clay in there or for a neck, we're going to throw some sphere in there for the body, we're going to throw some cylinder in there for the arm. We're going to just really push and pull this stuff as much as we can. Okay, so this is going to introduce us to mesh insertion, which is the uh, technical term. So the mesh insertion system, all of that stuff. Uh, then we're going to get into mesh organization. For those who know ZBrush a little bit, uh, you probably use subtools for hiding different parts of your model, things like that. And I, I'll make sure you understand why subtools exist today. And um, the key thing you know is that if Pixelogic had their way, they would have never done subtools. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that again. If Pixelogic had its way, subtools would not be a feature that exists um, as an outliner because their primary goal is to remove obstacles. And as you start to work with subtools, you'll see it starts to, starts to get confusing. Like, oh, am I in that subtool? Now i got to select that subtool. The mesh organization tools are designed to make things as easy as possible, but there is a learning curve and you do want to spend time learning that curve all right so after I've introduced you to the primary way of organization then I'll introduce you to subtools and then I'll explain why subtools are not for organization and then we'll go from there okay so the first thing I've got to do in this kit bashing and uh, I like this comment from Mads. Kit bashing was first invented by Rodan, quite old already. That's pretty cool. And uh, you can definitely see that in the uh, castings and just the way the fragmentation was done. I love, I, I have a, his, a book of his stuff by my bed. I go to sleep, uh, I look at it right before I go to sleep. So, kit bashing. We have a fundamental problem. If I'm going to start to add stuff to this model, I have a fundamental problem. Anybody know what's my biggest problem right now if I'm going to start to add a neck and a body and everything to this guy? So welding is one answer. Poly limit. Stretching. 
mesh resolution and subdiv levels so let me let me tackle this in the way in which development handled it okay so that you understand the the thinking behind them the the answer is it's the subdiv uh, levels but that's the end of the answer the real full on answer is you know is it basically everything you guys said so this model has been saved i'm going to uh, delete my undo history so that those aren't hanging around taking up memory and let me just save this uh, as week two okay we've all used masks so we know we can use a mask we can lower our subdivision level and you could if you wanted to you could try to pull out his entire upper body out of his head the problem this is the first problem development had okay because I remember this we're not interested in just features here guys I'm walking you through what did the developers think? What were their assumptions? And this is, what were their assumptions when no one else on the planet was thinking about things like they were? So, you could do that. That's possible. And right now, today, we know, well, we would just Dynamesh that. That's pretty easy. But Dynamesh didn't exist. It had to, somebody had to come up with that idea. So the first problem we have is, you can you can move stuff but you're gonna stretch it so then you can divide your model so now he's at one million you can divide your model to handle stretching let's go into clay and I'll show you this is kinda neat actually even though that's a little bit on the nutty side We're going to be able to get some kind of decent results out of this because polygon count can do a lot. Let's get some rib cage in there. You can do a lot with polygon count. Let me check my measurements. One head one head, that's my nipple line, that's my eighth rib, da da da. Bet you never thought to do this, but trust me, this was part of the conversation. Well, if we could give them unlimited amounts of polygons, then the stretching doesn't matter. And if you have something like the clay brush which is topology independent then this kind of topology ultimately doesn't matter that much well it does eventually but who thought I was going to be able to sculpt this out of that crazy topology any brave soul out there said ha I've done this before there it's not too shabby right for crazy but what are you gonna do with it right <laughs> you know you can not export it for animation uh, you, you decimation would work but now your problem is you have really bad sculpting topology this ribbing is only gonna get worse so as I come in and I start to do this even with clay it doesn't get fixed. Let's try to put an armpit in there. Let's try to get a rib. Oh, that rib's not gonna happen. You know, everything's gonna go wrong. Now it looks like he's wearing a hair shirt. So this is the first thing. Increase the amount of polygons so that you can stretch geometry. The second thing, 
well, now you've got to figure out this whole geometry system. How do you create topology? How do you do all of that stuff and do it on the fly? Well, you could do this, and, you know, I'll, no, I don't want to introduce you to Dynamesh. If you already know it, fine, but if not, I don't want to go there.